Hello my friends and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 build guide. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be covering my pick for the best melee warlock in Baldur's Gate 3. When you first meet Will, he introduces himself by leaping into combat, skewering a low-level goblin, shouting his name and title in a booming voice, um, and I really wanted to capture that dashing swordsman feel for him, which warlocks in Baldur's Gate 3 unfortunately somewhat struggle to do. The reason for this is that we're missing the Hexblade Warlock subclass, which is the warlock subclass from Tabletop Dungeons & Dragons, which is mostly intended to be the melee warlock that is Will's character archetype. Will therefore needs a little bit of help to be able to fulfill his role as a melee warlock who can get into combat, mix it up, and be charismatic while still hurling spells around. So we're going to put together a build, that, a build that allows him to do both. First up, let's take a look at his stats. So one thing that I want to note before we make any changes is that the warlock stats, the default recommended stats for Warlocks in Baldur's Gate 3 are terrible. They have five completely useless points floating in intelligence. They have three odd numbers. Uh, they get no strength, which is important if you want to be a melee character or dexterity, uh, depending on if you're using finesse or strength, although we will later mitigate that through a subclass feature of the Warlock in this build. Um, but overall, these stats are terrible. However, we're actually not going to fix these stats just yet, because the very first thing that we're going to do in order to give Will his melee combat aptitude is actually change his level 1 class selection. The reason for this is that we are going to add in two levels of Paladin to this build, and by taking it at level 1, we get access to heavy armor proficiency. If you multi-class into this later, you will end up only getting medium armor from the multi-class, so we have to take it at level 1 if we want access to heavy armor. You won't necessarily wear heavy armor throughout the game, but it's very important that you have access to it because there's lots of good heavy armors that will synergize well with what we're trying to do, and more options are better than fewer options, obviously, so you want to take Paladin at level 1 to ensure you have access to that. For our subclass, we are going to go with the Oath of Vengeance. The reason is this Inquisitor's Might ability, which, as a bonus action for a Channel Oath charge, lets you grant yourself, or an ally, but in this case yourself, an additional 2 Radiant Damage. But that's not just 2 Radiant Damage, it's Radiant Damage equal to your Charisma modifier. So, since we're going to be a Warlock with a very high level of Charisma, our Charisma modifier be adding our Charisma modifier to damage is incredibly powerful. You've seen that in my previous Warlock build, where I talk about how good it is to add your Charisma to damage on Agonizing Blast. Well, this way we're going to be able to do it on our weapon attacks, which we can do for several, several times around. Uh, let's also now fix our stats. We still don't actually need any strength, because we are going to be using our Charisma for attacks and damage as well. So we're going to max out on Charisma, going up to 16, place the other bonus in Constitution, so we can get to 16 of that, get ourselves 14 Dexterity, and with our remaining two points, pick up 12 Wisdom, just for the saving throws. These last two points you could move somewhere else, whether that be to uh, Strength or Intelligence. Um, in particular, I would consider moving them into strength just to give you a little more jump distance and carry weight, especially if you're a main character, but this is going to be a really good stat spread by default for most melee character, for, for most caster character classes. For our skills, if you were building this for a main character, you definitely want the conversation skills. If it's Will as a supporting character in your party and you have someone else mostly handling conversation, you won't need these conversation skills as much and can move the skill points elsewhere. Um, our floating skill point could go to sleight of hand because we'll have decent dexterity. Stealth is always extremely useful. Perception is good to have in a party, but... Overall, you should pick what you want most of, depending on what your character is intended to do. If it's a main character, or if you want Will to be your party face, then you will pick up points in the conversation skills. Probably persuasion and deception are the two that come up the most often. And if you are doing something otherwise, then you'll want it in stealth or sleight of hand. I also do highly recommend proficiency in athletics. Being able to shove is really nice, even with low strength. 
All right, so we've gotten our charisma to damage, which is the step one in making this char character powerful in melee. Let's go on to level two. At level two, we're going to jump into Warlock because now we get access to Eldritch Blast and all of the Warlock spells. We also get to take our The Fiend subclass, which has this really nice ability for a melee character. Whenever you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, you get your Charisma modifier plus your Warlock level in temporary hit points. Since we're going to be putting most of our levels into Warlock throughout this build, this is a consistent and powerful source of additional temporary hit points that will definitely help keep you alive. Especially because we have heavy armor proficiency, you can get some heavy armors that have damage reduction, and that will allow you damage reduction to incoming damage multiplies the value of these temporary hit points significantly. This build is one of the best at using this Fiend subclass feature, and it's a fairly powerful feature if you are mixing it up in combat and both killing and taking damage, so it's really nice to be able to use it. For our spell selection, we definitely want Armor of Agathis. It's the best level 1 spell for Warlock, and also, while you can't have the Fiend temporary hit points restore the hit points from Armor of Agathis. The return damage is still very valuable, and the temporary hit points are good as well. Um, for our second spell at early levels, you should just take Hex. It will allow you to increase your damage. At this point, you will probably be playing mostly as a ranged character, just using Eldritch Blasts, just like any other Warlock. Although, if you have any finesse weapon, you can be attacking in melee using your Dexterity at this point. For our, our cantrip selection, uh, obviously you need Eldritch Blast, and for our second cantrip, I think Blade Ward is a good pick on this character for the, a similar reason as it is on other tanks. Um, while it's not a great action in combat, typically, it can be better on this character because it can allow you to protect your Armor of Agathis and return damage with that. It can allow you to protect your Fiend temporary hit points. Um, so it can really increase your longevity in combat. You usually won't want to be spending turns on Blade Ward in combat, but it has enough utility when you have sources of temporary hit points that it's worth picking up, I think, compared to the rest of the uh, Warlock cantrips. At level 2, we get the best Eldritch Invocation in the game, Agonizing Blast. Now we're adding our Charisma damage to melee and ranged attacks. So you can be making, say, a Rapier attack with uh, your Dexterity, hitting on a plus 2, and adding plus 3 from your Charisma. So adding plus 5, that's a pretty good attack at level 3. Um, and then, of course, you have your ranged attack with Agonizing Blast, hitting for 1d10 plus 3, also a pretty solid ranged attack at this level. And then for our second uh, Eldritch Invocation, you have a choice here between Repelling Blast and Devil Sight. These two are by far the best remaining two. Um, and I would typically go, I think, in this spot for Devil Sight, because this will allow us, once we get our next level of Warlock, to cast darkness and fight enemies inside the darkness while at full effectiveness. Since we're a melee character, drawing enemies into a darkness cloud that we have up on ourselves is extremely powerful, because we'll be able to beat them in melee, and they will be blinded with no save while fighting us in our own darkness cloud. So your typical combat pattern at this point is going to be, well, next level is going to be to cast darkness on yourself, allow the enemies to enter melee with you, and then start beating them up in melee. For our spell selection, you probably want to add in Expeditious Retreat at some point. It's a good mobility tool at this level, although we're going to swap out whatever we pick here pretty soon, so you don't need to pick anything in particular. Another good option is Command, but I would... Uh, I'd not spend too much thought on which one we select here, because we're going to swap that out as we level up. We don't need to change anything yet, though, because we don't have access to higher level spells, but let's level up. At Warlock level 3, we get to pick our Pact Boon. You might have been able to guess which one we're going to pick. Of course, we are picking Pact of the Blade. The reason 
that this is so good is because of a hidden feature on Bind Packed Weapon. This allows you to turn any weapon into a packed weapon, so you get all of the magical benefits of that weapon. But while it doesn't say this in this part of the description, it, it mentions it elsewhere, what this also does is mean that that weapon will now use your Charisma modifier, your spellcasting modifier, for attack and damage. So any attack we make is going to be made using our Charisma, and then adding double our Charisma to damage because of the bonus action that we get from our Paladin level. Um, which means that we are able to apply our very high attributes very quickly, uh, very frequently, for a ton of extra damage. For our spell selection, we are, of course, going to take Darkness with our first spell, and then we're going to replace whichever one we picked here. I, I think probably I would actually replace Hex, because it's less useful at this point. Hex also, as a bonus action... Um, is superseded by our bonus, our paladin bonus action. So it's less useful than it is on your typical warlock for this character, although still pretty good. Um, but at this point in the game, it stopped scaling. We really want to be spending our warlock spell slots on higher level spells. So some good options are things like Misty Step is really powerful. Cloud of Daggers is good. It's just no save consistent damage at this level. Uh, something to concentrate on, although you'll usually want to be concentrating on darkness, so my pick for this one would be Misty Step. Another thing that's pretty good is Mirror Image at this level, because it gives you access to just increased armor class, which is very valuable since you intend to be in melee combat a lot of the time. One thing this build will suffer from a little bit is just that Warlocks don't get a lot of HP, so compared to other melee characters, we're going to be lower on hit points than a typical melee character. Misty Steps mobility comes in handy a lot. At this level, we're actually going to go back and take our level two of Paladin. Because we now have access to second level Warlock spell slots, level two Paladin allows us to use those for smites. Warlock spell slots come back every short rest. So every time we attack with a Warlock uh, with a with a weapon and hit with it, we can spend a warlock spell slot, which only costs us a short rest based resource to do smite damage. It will also always use our highest level spell slot, so at our level two spells are going to hit for three d eight bonus smite damage, which is an incredibly powerful effect. We also get access to a bunch of really good paladin spells. The most important one is bless, although we'll often want to be concentrating on darkness instead, but Bless is very useful if you are in a team and does increase your ability to hit. Some other... You, you don't, unfortunately, get access to Healing Word, which would be the best one, and these save DCs are going to be based on your wisdom, so you are going to not be able to cause enemies to fail saves, but Bless is a nice buff to have. The special smites can be good in certain circumstances. Shield of Faith is a decent concentration option, uh, if you start the day with it, because it just lasts until you lose concentration. And then there's a bunch of utility spells like Protection from Evil and Good. Divine Favor is also a bonus action that increases the damage of your attacks, which is really nice because we're going to be making a lot of attacks. The more damage they do, the better. We also get a Fighting Style, which allows us to take Dueling. We'll be using a one-handed weapon and a shield for this build throughout almost the entire game, and Dueling increases your damage by two. That also plays very well into what Will is doing with his dueling weapon. You could play this differently and take great weapon fighting and have him use a two-handed weapon, but I think in general, because of his low hit points and because you often want to be fighting enemies in darkness, you're going to be best off having high AC. Having high AC and giving enemies disadvantage on their attacks against you means we'll rarely get hit, so our low HP won't matter, and as we increase our HP every time we get a kill, the more defensive mitigation we can stack on top of that, the better. So I think you're best off with dueling or defense and using one-handed weapon and shield for this build, especially because so much of your damage comes from smites and from your charisma, adding your charisma modifier several times. Prepared spell list, like I said, the only thing that we really need to have here is Bless. Adding some healing in is kind of nice, although you don't want to use this in combat, but still decent to have. At this level, we go back to Warlock, and we get our feet, bringing us up to 
Charisma 18, so we're adding plus 8 to every attack, which is really excellent, of course. I'd get to add in another, another cantrip, you can take one of the utility ones, like Minor Illusion or Mage Hand. And for our spell selection, you don't need to care too much about this. At this point, you have your concentration spells more or less on lock. It's going to be either Bless or Darkness in almost every fight. Although you can add in some control spells. Um, command is really good to have on your as a Warlock spell, because it's just a really solid control spell. It benefits a lot from being upcast, because you can hit multiple enemies with it. If you spend one turn to cost multiple enemies a turn, then that is a very favorable trade for you in terms of action economy, so command can be useful to upcast on a Warlock. It also isn't a concentration spell, which is useful at this point. At Warlock level 5, you get extra attack, which is, of course, one of the best features in the game, uh, especially because we are going to be adding our Charisma modifier to damage on every attack, so doubling your attacks in a round is very powerful. Um, the more times we attack, the more times we get to add our Charisma damage. For our Eldritch Evocation, we're going to take whichever one we didn't take here, but I highly recommend that it be Repelling Blast at this level and that you take Devil Sight on level 3. And for our spell selection, the best one, honestly, is probably Counterspell. It's just so valuable to have. Although Hunger of Hadar is also an excellent spell that you are the only character in the game that gets access to it. It's another no-save blind. Um, it does damage at the end and at the start of a character's turn. So if you can keep them locked in that uh, area, they are going to take extra damage, which is really powerful. But... It's very important to have Counterspell. I would recommend probably replacing Expeditious Retreat, which we're no longer using, with Hunger of Hadar and just getting access to both. Although if you really wanted, you could add in Fireball or Hypnotic Pattern, both of which are excellent level 3 spells as well. All these level 3 spells are very solid, so we'll probably swap out our lower level spells for them as we continue onwards. Warlock level 6, we continue to upgrade our spells. This also, of course, having hit Warlock level 5, gave us level 3 smites, which increases our melee damage significantly. So we'll just take kind of whatever. You can make a replacement here at this point. Honestly, I think that this spell selection is quite good, though. So I might just stick with this. Um, but at this point in the game, you should have a pretty good feel for what spells you're actually using and which ones you aren't. Get rid of the ones you aren't to take ones that you might. Now, of course, we hit level 5. Uh, sorry, excuse me, level 4 Warlock spells. We also get another Eldritch Invocation. I wouldn't take one of these ones that allows you to cast higher level Warlock spells. So at this point, there's a few options here. Um... But most of these are not going to to matter that much. One with Shadows has some uses. Um, and of course, there's always stuff like Beast Speech. If you wanted to get that a little earlier, you could have taken that at a lower level maybe, but I wouldn't have done that. Another option, if you have found a good robe or, or clothing that you prefer to use to your heavy armor, is to take Armor of Shadows. This you can use while you have a shield equipped. And there are some robes that are really excellent for Warlocks. I'll, sh I'll be showing you one in a moment. Um, so it can be valuable to give up on your heavy armor in order to have Armor of Shadows and a powerful robe equipped instead of heavy armor. So that's probably what I would take. It just g gives you a little more versatility. For our spell selection at 4th level, there's honestly not that much that's super powerful here, although because we're fighting in melee, Fire Shield can be fun. It's another non-concentration spell. Most of the time, though, we're going to be spending our spell slots either on things like Counter Spell or on just Smites. There are a couple fights in the game that are completely solved by having access to Wall of Fire, so I would probably just pick that one up because it can basically win certain encounters entirely by itself. Uh, other than that, though, your level 4 spell selection I don't think is actually incredibly important for Warlocks. So again, pick whatever you think is cool. 
we keep going down the warlock path here, gaining access primarily to another feat. Of course, we want to, uh, to boost our charisma as high as possible, since we are adding it several times to our damage. And then you just take whichever spell you think is going to be most valuable here. And at Warlock level 9, we get access to 5th level spells. 5th level smites are really strong, of course. Um, and while the Warlock 5th level spells are not that great, Hold Monster I have found typically not very good because the enemy needs to fail 2 saves before it costs them a single turn. And honestly, your damage just from your weapon attacks is going to be better than Flame Strike or Cone of Cold most of the time. Weapon attacks and Eldritch Blasts. Um, so... I would not worry too much about actually casting these spells. You are either going to be using the lower level utility spells um, or casting stuff like Armor of Agathis. I do think that if you want to lean into the Armor of Agathis plus Fire Shield part of the build, then that is a viable route. Although I recommend checking out my Invincible Tank Wizard build uh, because that one was really fun and really works really uses that synergy to do a ton of retaliate damage, so check that out if you're interested in doing that. You also get an Eldritch Invocation here. Probably the best of these is actually Minions of Chaos, because Conjure Elemental can be very valuable. It gives you a day-long summon, which can be really useful on some days. Um, of course, it's a day-long summon at the cost of a short rest resource, which makes it significantly different than the daylong summons for other spellcasters, because warlocks aren't spending, uh, like most casters only get one level five spell slot per day or two level five spell slots per day. So depending on their, their level and resources. And so they are spending a really important resource to get this summoned. As a warlock, you can just short rest and get this back. And if you have a bard ally, then you can short rest three times, so you can add in some additional casts of spells like this as well. Warlocks mostly don't get much past level 9, though, so there's a couple options that we could go. We could just take level 10, and gain Fiendish Resilience. This is not, not terrible at all, just gaining resistance to a type of damage um, is a very valuable effect. You could also take a one level dip into another class. I think there's a couple options here that make some sense. Uh, you could get Bardic Inspiration from a Bard, but that's not a that's more of a role-playing choice for Will, because he's sort of bardy. But probably the best is actually to take a level of Sorcerer, because this gives you access to the Storm Sorcery subclass feature, giving you fly movement whenever you cast a spell. Very powerful for any melee character to be able to reposition. And also, very importantly, it gives you access to the shield spell. Shield is the single best defensive tool in the game, and this character up to this point doesn't really have a good use for their reactions. So having access to shield means that you now have a solid reaction that you can use at any time um, to defend yourself, in addition to counter spell, which of course is, is a great use for a reaction, but this gives you a second use for a reaction. Prevents you from taking hits, which allows you to preserve your temporary HP that you're gaining off of your Fiend subclass levels, and overall a lot of mobility and utility from the one level Sorcerer dip. So that's probably what I would pick, but there's a lot of options for one level dips. You could also go with Cleric, that gives you a lot of uh, additional utility, although since we already have Bless from Paladin, you lose some of the power of the Cleric dip. Bless heavy armor and martial weapon proficiency from Paladin, you lose some of the utility of the Cleric Dip, but it would still give you access to Healing Word, which is a great use for a bonus action. So there's a few options here. I think Sorcerer is the strongest by far. Um, or of course, you could just continue to level 10 Warlock, and that would be fine as well. For our second spell, you probably just take anything that's sort of a utility spell, Enhance Leap, is a nice one to have access to. This also gives you a lot of bonus cantrips, which are nice. And these, unlike a lot of one level dips, use your charisma. 
so anything that does damage you can you can use but of course we already have the best damage dealing cantrip in the game in eldritch blast nothing's immune to force damage so you're probably not going to want to select damage dealing cantrips you just want to select utility stuff like mage hand dancing lights light and true strike just to annoy youtube commenters So putting it all together, we are able to, let me bind packed weapon on this, on the weapon we have in our hand here. And so now when we attack with this weapon, it's going to use our charisma for attacks and damage. If I first cast my paladin ability, Inquisitor's Might, this only gives, we can only do this uh, once per short rest also, I should mention that. So it's only, only once. But it's a bonus action to do this and then do some additional damage here. Let me also equip this so we actually get our plus two damage from our weapon style. Oops. <laughs> Let that time out. All right. Let's put this all together, shall we? So our AC is going to be 15 with no armor equipped, but with heavy armor equipped, we managed to hit AC 20. We also gain hit points. This is just with normal plate armor equipped. We gain hit points every time we kill an enemy. We'll gain 14 temporary hit points, which is especially powerful. Um, you don't really need specific gear for this build, although I will mention this potent robe just because it's insanely strong for warlocks, um, giving you the additional damage equal to your charisma modifier on cantrips. So anytime you attack at range which with Eldritch Blast, the potent robe is very valuable. Anything that increases your damage on your attacks is good, so like these dark justiciar gauntlets. And also there is a hat that increases your charisma Oops, I didn't put that in my inventory before doing this. So let's find it. This one. If you want, When you get this in Act 3, increasing your charisma is, of course, ridiculously powerful on this character. So those are some, some items to look out for. But with our plus one longsword that we have made our packed weapon, we can... Oh, I need to exit because he lost his uh, lost his actions here. We can, as a bonus action, Inquisitors might ourselves. And then attack an enemy. If we were to hit or if we decide to use a smite, we can smite with a level 5 smite for... 1d8 plus 8 plus 5 plus 5d8 damage, which is incredibly strong. We also have fully functional warlock spell casting up to the maximum available level, and 3d10 plus 15 on a ranged weapon from our Eldritch Blast damage, which is an incredibly strong ranged weapon as well. This character also gets to fight most of its fights in darkness, meaning that you will have advantage and enemies will have disadvantage, and you won't be able to be targeted by ranged attackers at all. Altogether, I think this really fulfills the brief of letting Will mix it up in melee the way that he wants to, and giving you the strongest melee character in Baldur's Gate 3, melee warlock character in Baldur's Gate 3. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and... As always, if you have, feel free to leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, that helps a ton with the algorithm, and you can of course subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Cheers my friends, and I'll catch you next time.